Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Examined. I'm your host, Doug Drummond, and in today's episode, we are doing Phone, phone Wars. War. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to ask the question do you iPhone or would you rather Android? As I compare the Samsung Galaxy S4 against the brand new Apple iPhone 5S. Stick with me as we look at both these phones and help you make a decision coming up right now. Now while there are many Android phones to choose from, today we're going to take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S4, which is their big phone they launched about 5 or 6 months ago, and it is very comparable to the iPhone 5S. Now I just got back into iPhone, my buddy Jonathan over at TLD Today was kind enough to hook me up with a fantastic deal to get me the 64 gigabyte gold version, the Broham edition that I've been wanting. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at both these phones right now. First things first, it's all about the pricing, and Apple hasn't done much in way of changing the pricing. The 16 gigabyte version is 199, the 32 gigabyte version is 299, and the 64 gigabyte version is 399. Of course, these are all with new two-year contracts. If you want unsubsidized pricing, those prices go up astronomically. Well, on the flip side, the Samsung Galaxy S4 is also available from your big providers, AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon, for 199. But I've seen other companies like T-Mobile offering them for 99 dollars with monthly payments. Either way you look at it, they are both very comparable in cost. So first, let's talk the processor. Now a lot of you guys, this may sound like a foreign language, but the iPhone 5S comes with Apple's brand new A7 processor. Now that also features an M7 graphics co-processor and it features 64-bit architecture. Whereas the Galaxy is featuring a 1.9 gigahertz Snapdragon 600 processor. What's that mean to you? Probably nothing. They're both very good comparable chipsets and both phones are quite fast at what they do. Where you're going to see the biggest difference is in screen size. While the iPhone 5S, Apple decided to stick with that 4 inch design, it features 325 PPI, that's pixels per inch. But that Samsung has that Super AMOLED 5 inch with 441 PPI. This is basically like saying one phone screen is ridiculously sharp and the other one's just pretty sharp. Either way you look at it, they're both excellent displays. One's just quite a bit noticeably larger. The iPhone color seems to be a lot more toned down and realistic, whereas the Galaxy S4s is saturated. You get deep blacks and sharp whites, so it's going to give you a little bit more of a crisp type brighter look. But that comes with a price. The Galaxy S4 is about 10% taller, and therefore it is a little bit heavier, and of course it is much, much bigger. It's less pocketable than the iPhone 5S. And I did notice a difference. It's a lot easier to put the iPhone in and out of a pocket, especially if you've got smaller hands or you're wearing smaller pockets. Now the iPhone 5S has a new True Tone Dual LED Flash, which kind of gives you a little bit more color depth, a warmer color, and it's not quite as washed out as the single LED flash on the Samsung Galaxy S4. The Samsung features a 13 megapixel camera, which is unbelievable. It does great macro shots, and it looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous on that big screen. Whereas Apple decided to stick with that 8 megapixel camera, and of course, they didn't just leave it the same as the iPhone 5. They did tons of enhancements to it and added brand new features as far as sensors go, light sensors, aperture rating, and it actually gives you a better low light picture that seems to be a lot less washed out. Again, comparing the cameras is like comparing apples to apples. They're pretty Pretty much on the exact same level. Now as far as features go, of course we all know the Apple is completely sealed. The iPhone is sealed, you're not really supposed to take it apart, you can't change out the batteries, you can't add extra memory, whereas the Galaxy S4 has a completely removable back, you can hot swap out other batteries, if that 2600 milliamp battery is not enough, you can have two of those and pop them in midway through the day. The other big thing is adding a micro SD card. Now I thought, great, a 16 gigabyte phone, I'll just double it, I'll triple it, I'll add a 32 gig or even up to a 64 gig micro SD card, but the trick is you can't put your applications on there. The micro SD card is only going to be about as good as storing pictures and video and music. Now the next big concern is the battery. Now I know smartphones use a tremendous amount of battery no matter what, especially when you're checking your Facebook 30 times a day and you're on Twitter and you're on Google Plus. But the thing is, with the iPhone, it actually has a little bit better battery life. And the way I tested it was I played movies on it and I actually got a 
about six hours worth of movie time playing off of the Android phone, the Galaxy S4, whereas I got quite a bit more, about seven and a half hours of straight streaming off of my iPhone 5S. Now what attracted me to the Galaxy in the first place were all the gimmicks, all the tricks. The Galaxy S4 features a swipe keyboard, it's got eye tracking, it's got air gesture, it's got smart stay, and what did that really mean? After about a week, I turned all that stuff off. I'm not into just hovering over my phone to move pictures. It was gimmicky, it weighed the phone down as far as memory, and there's no way to get rid of all that touch whiz type bloatware. Now the iPhone added something brand new. Behind the Sapphire home button, which is completely different than home buttons of the past, they've got a touch ID, which is capable of storing up to five fingerprints. Now they don't all have to be yours. You could use a family member or a trusted friend, but you can put five different fingerprints in there to unlock your phone as well as download purchases from the app store. Something new Android taught me was Notification Center. Now I know Apple had this before, I never ever used it. When I went to Android, I found myself using the notifications all the time by swiping down from the top. I could quickly access and features like missed calls, missed tweets, Facebook notifications. When I went back to the iPhone, I realized this was possible as well. And it's just a great quick way to instantly have at your fingertips what you need as far as notifications. But with iOS 7, they added a new thing called Command Center. You swipe up from the bottom, you can quickly access your calculator and alarm you've got a flashlight built in now change your volume work your airdrops so a lot of cool stuff going on with the addition of iOS 7 and it works flawlessly on the iPhone Probably one of the big nudges in the right direction for you is going to be experience level. While the iPhone has got that bulletproof simplicity where it's just anyone can use it, whereas Android kind of is a little bit more customizable flexibility, which means you can do a lot more with it, but it is a little bit more complicated. Now, even though the iPhone changed very little from the 5 to the 5S and even really the 5C, the fact of the matter remains that iPhone has that bold, rich look. It just looks like it is a very, very solid device, whereas the Galaxy, even though it's got a huge, gorgeous display, it just looks cheap and it lacks the craftsmanship of the iPhone. The software is gimmicky, it's a waste of space. All you fanboys, I mean, what do you think? I just am hoping to nudge you guys in one way or the other. I get asked the question all the time, do you iPhone or do you Android? And really the answer is personal preference, where it all boils down to. Now these are some of the reasons that I chose to go back to Apple and I chose not to stick with Android. But there are a lot of things about Android I really did enjoy and I'd like to keep around and kind of play with Android on the side. So that's gonna do it for me guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this video kind of helped you guys to make a choice because those are the phones that are gonna be pretty popular within this next year here until we see something new and the question always comes to mind do i want to apple or do i want to an android that's gonna do it for me guys thanks for watching make sure you check out our previously examined video subscribe to our channel and i'll see you guys all in the next episode take care